I'm not allowed on the tractor, which is, which is probably good just as well. I would be absolutely scared stiff driving a tractor through um, vine rows. Um, but we do do a lot of it ourselves and it's it's so rewarding. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. Well, we have one, one final line back to a part we haven't visited yet to uh, Tuscany and Italy. This is, um, uh, this is made mm. by a great friend of mine, Lamberto Frescovaghi. I met him when he was at UC Davis. Um, he um, is uh, my generation and he's uh, of a great Frescobaldi family. And this, feast your eyes guys, mm. is the villa that is owned by his mother and his uncle. It's got nothing to do with the Frescobaldi family. The villa was designed by uh, a certain Michelangelo, who you may have heard of, and it is in the hills just above Florence. And from the garden, you have the most outstanding view of the city of Florence. I recommend any of you who post-COVID go to Tuscany to visit there. They've opened a, a bistro. The vineyards which were planted by Lamberto are, are planted on an amphitheater, which is just gorgeous. It's an IGT, um, Tuscan wine. Um, so it's not just indigenous grape varieties. And in fact- I have the blend here. It's 50% uh, 50, 50 Cabernet, 20% uh, Merlot, 25% Cabernet Franc and five Petit Verdot. So yeah. it's a Bordeaux blend. It's a Bordeaux blend. And mm -hmm. actually Lamberto loves that. He's a Merlot freak. Um, I mean, this is the guy that makes Mosetto. Um, so you know, he's right, right to be a Merlot freak. Um, but this is completely a private project. And you would not know that it's anything to do with the Frescobaldi family. It's sold completely apart from them. It's not sold by the Frescobaldi network at all. And, but it, as I say in the book, it's where Lamberto is as happiest. And it's where actually, if he does retire from being president of the Frescobaldi family, um, it's where he would love to go. And actually, I don't blame him. Um, a little anecdote, I feel really close to this estate because one day Lamberto wasn't there, but he asked me to go up and taste all the barrels of Merlot uh, to make a special Merlot wine for them. Um, we have a bit of history because Le Pain uh, is 100% Merlot. And so I tasted all the barrels and I thought, gosh, this is going to be really tough because they were not good enough. And I asked a winemaker who's a good friend of mine as well if I could taste everything. And being a good MW, I took notes on everything. Cheers to my friend Lamberto. I tasted, I took notes of everything. And the wine, the grape variety that came out head and shoulders of the others, but we actually made a reserve bottling and is very successful, was Petit Verdot. 